everybody, welcome back to the Awesome Physio YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about why am I getting groin pain? Why have I got pain around the front of my hip? So there's lots of different causes for this. There's lots of other conditions that can refer into the front of the hip, but we're going to be breaking down the main musculoskeletal conditions that we see in clinic. One, of course, is a psoas tendinopathy or injury or myalgia into the psoas muscle. So your hip flexor muscle, a lot of people don't realise, it blends from the lumbar spine, so from the lower back, through and attaching around the front of the pelvis. So most commonly if someone's got a strain or a tendinopathy into that tendon, what you find is it's normally repetitive use. So they've either done a lot of seat, sitting, so they've sat for long periods of time which can tighten through the psoas, anything where they're doing any kind of sport that's using the leg. So for example with football, where you're kicking through the leg can actually contract through there. Anybody that does any repetitive, possibly cycling or running, where you're loading through the front of the leg, so anything where you're loading around the front, what happens is you get a really deep ache into the front of the leg, so you find that it's normally worse from using the leg, so if you're walking upstairs or you're moving, it typically contracts around that area and can bring on the pain, so there's normally quite a clear mechanical trigger. It feels like quite a deep ache, it can sometimes be quite sharp on certain movements, Normally when you're rotating the hip, so if you're taking a hip into a circular, so a circumduction movement, sometimes that can become a little bit sharp, but also you can normally hear quite a big deep click into the front of the hip where that tendon is moving through. You can find sometimes that produces an audible click around the front. What we would test for if someone's presenting with this, we'd want to look at the hip movement and the mechanics. Is that person standing where they're loading the body forward, so putting more pressure around the front of the hip? Or is there weakness through the glutes and the hamstrings that is causing them to load more around the front into the psoas tendon? We have done a full series on releasing around the front for a psoas tendinopathy or hip flexor tightness that I will tag below. Number two, what we typically see is osteoarthritis into the hip joint, so wear and tear into the hip joint. This is normally, obviously, with a demographic that's a little bit older, possibly 45, 50 plus, depending on what someone's done to the hip. So if they've had a lot of history of, for example, high impact sports, so rugby, anything like squash or anything that's loaded through the hip joint and they've not stretched and moved the hip over time or conditioned around the joint, sometimes that can load the joint surfaces together and can predispose wear and tear forming into the hip. What you normally find with the daily pattern is they normally have stiffness first thing in the morning when they wake up and typically at the end of the day it's normally worse if depending on obviously the severity so initially it's normally if it's quite mild it's quite minor symptoms of a little bit of stiffness and soreness as it gets more severe, they might struggle to weight bear into the hip. They might have a fixed flexion deformity, so they're leaning the body forward where the, where the hip is fixed into a position. What we normally find is it gets more severe. Someone tries to reduce the likelihood of them bringing the hip up and in. So it's flexion and internal rotation, so I have for bringing the leg inward. So you find that when people sit down, they tend to sit with their legs slightly further apart, so their feet are turning outwards. And what this does, it takes the pressure off the hip joint. So normally weight bearing, getting up from a seated position to standing can be incredibly stiff and sore, and they can feel it around this area. Really commonly, if someone's getting wear and tear into the hip, they can start to get pain around the side of the hip, so around where the gluteus, medius, and minimus muscles are. The reason why is your hip abductor muscles are involved in stabilizing the pelvis. So if you've changed the position of the hip or it's worn away within the hip joint, you're gonna be loading differently through those supportive pelvic muscles, but also you start to reduce the power around that side. What happens if you've lost that lovely conditioning support around the pelvis is you can start to load around the greater trochanter where those muscles attach and you can get something called trochanteric bursitis so we get swelling of the bursa around the side of the hip again just as an addition potentially to the osteophytus we have done a video on this that I will tag below to release around that area but what we would look at if someone came in to see us is we would be assessing the hip looking at that quality of movement, the criteria they look at if they're thinking of a potential hip replacement or regards to working through would be how it impacts daily activities when using the hip. 
Number three, what we can see is something called femoroacetabular impingement, so pinching within the hip joint. This is normally within younger clients that potentially have a history of dysplasia of the hip, so abnormal positioning of the ball and socket joint of the hip joint, and what it can cause is pinching within inside the hip joint itself. So if we're looking at the hip joint, you've got your acetabulum, which is on the pelvis, which is like a cup, and you've got your femur coming in just like this. What can happen with pinching is you either have an overgrowth of the cup of the acetabulum, tablum or you have bony formation on, on the femoral head as it comes in. So the reason why it gives anterior groin pain is typically as you're lifting the hip up and turning in, so again very similar to wear and tear, what happens is it can pinch around the front so it can become quite sharp on movement. So what we normally see depending on obviously different types is that they might have a loss of flexibility through the hip when they're younger, they find that they struggle to do flexible things through the hip as they're growing up so already there's that limitation into the hip joint it might be that as they come in to see us in clinic where they're really young active and sporty that real kind of deep sharpness around the front of the hip you'd want to be working out well what is going on with this person why where they're so young and active why are they suddenly getting this really deep sharp pain into the front of the hip joint this is where we would assess and palpate around, make sure that obviously there's nothing else that's involved as well, and then typically refer on to get imaging into the hip to see what's going on, and then design a treatment plan later to get the area around the hip moving and to release that pressure.